today list comprehensions with if else statements in Python. You're going to learn everything you need to know about using if else statements in your list comprehensions. Okay, so let's crack into it. Let's say we had a list here called list one um, with three integers, one, two, and three. And you probably know that our foundational list comprehension is going to be i for i in list one. Okay, this is our foundational list comprehension. And what we're going to do is learn how to put if else statements on top of this to have sort of conditional behavior. So what I'm thinking of doing is filtering to ensure that all the numbers are positive numbers and any number, any integer three, we're going to multiply that by five so that it's 15. So let's see what that looks like. The first thing we're, we're going to want to do is go to the left of our for loop and we can add an if else statement here. So we can do if i equals three, uh, well, we have our operation here. So i x five, if i equals three, else i, okay? So now we have one, two, 15. And look where our if else statement is. It's kind of right in the middle and it's to the left of the for loop. That's what's important. So it's to the left of the for loop. That's where our operation is occurring. And you might be wondering, wait, I've seen if statements to the right of the for loop. And I'll show you what that looks like. So you could do if i greater than zero, okay? Everything's greater than zero, that returns the same thing. Now, what if we did if greater than one? Now it's going to filter out all those values and just return two, three. Again, if it has to be greater than two, filtering out all those values. Now, what if I did that same times five thing, right? So it's if i equals three, we'll do i x five, okay? Isn't that a bit of a different response? We only have that 15 here. Where are our one and two from before? Basically what happened is this if else statement and this if statement to the right of the for loop take on different behaviors. And the way I like to think of it is that if statements to the right of the for loop are basically like filters. They're like the first line of defense, the first filter that's gonna happen before any if else statement in here happens. And we could combine the two. And what we would wanna do is add our if else statement like before. So if i equals three else i, okay? And what's the issue here? Ah, just missing the i. And now this should run. And again, we're gonna get 15 because we're filtering out everything that's not a three. Now, if we remove this if statement back to our old one, two, 15. And if we add in a filter here of one, uh, we're only looking for the one. Um, if we did greater than one, then we should have our two and 15, right? Does this make sense? Um, maybe if we want it to be greater than 10, we're gonna get no numbers at all because the inputs were one, two, three. So again, this if statement is like a filter, a first filter. And then after things have passed that filter, then we have an if else statement. Does that make sense? So again, different behavior for this if else statement and this if statement. I have a good stack overflow question here for you or answer that will help clarify things. But before we do that, I just wanna show you one more question that you might be having. And that is, um, let's say we remove this if else, okay? So here we have our filter on the right. We'll just say if greater than zero, okay? And you might be thinking, well, what if we put an else statement here? So we just do else I or something, right? Just let it pass. Well, you can't have an else to the right of the for loop. You literally just cannot have an else to the right of the for loop from what I understand. And it makes sense from a filter perspective because there's no else on a filter, right? So just keep in mind that any else is gonna happen to the left of the for loop. 
And let's just remove this completely for a minute, okay? ix5, well, if we do if i equals three, else i, okay, our normal function, once I add my i in here again. So here we have our normal function, one, two, 15 from the beginning. And you might be thinking, do I need that else, else statement here? I think you do. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that this needs to be an if else statement if it's to the left of the for loop. And then again, to the right of the for loop can only be an if statement. So if you need an if else, it needs to happen to the left. If you need an if, it needs to happen to the right. Does that make sense? Sweet. So now we're going to move on. We're going to go back to the stack overflow question, which I want to read you because this will help conceptualize things. Okay. So what you want to do is think of this if else statement as this lambda and think of this if statement slash filter as this second lambda. And when we add the whole thing together as a list comprehension, we're mapping things with lambda and we have our if else here, and this map is occurring on a already filtered list for our second condition, right? So for us here, we'd be filtering out values less than zero, values less than one, those examples I showed you, and then everything that makes it past that filter, we do the lambda on. So let's go back here and start to build out that lambda. Um, I'm gonna kind of do this from scratch, so if I make a mistake, my bad. So I think we want to do um, I X five A. Okay. So this is our most simple map object and I'll just wrap everything in a list so you can see it. So this is our most simple one with no conditions. It's just one, two, three, all times five becomes five, 10, 15. Now let's start adding our conditions. So I think we want to do if i equals three, else i, okay? And that is the exact same thing we had before our one, two, 15. So hopefully I could pull this up from the history. If three, else i, right? So those are the exact two, exact same things. These two statements are basically the exact same. And it actually speaks to why we even have list comprehensions at all. It's just the most clean way to do this. And of course, this is pretty clean too. And that's even an improvement on if we had to do this as a for loop, right? So I guess either of these are better than a for loop. But anyway, so getting back to our lambda. So that solves that side of the equation. And what if we had our other filter on the right side? So we'll do if greater than one, um, if i greater than one. So we're filtering out that one and now we just have two and 15. So what's that gonna look like in our mapped lambda function? Well, we're gonna take a, which is actually list one. Sorry, I'll go back and explain that a and list one are the same thing. I think a was just like in my um, history. But anyway, so we have um, our good old 1, 2, 15, where we're doing our if else that occurs to the left of the for loop. And now we want to add our filter. So what's that going to look like? I believe we want to wrap this in a filter. And we have our lambda, let's say greater than one, list one. Okay, missing a closing bracket. Again, I'm gonna just do this again so it all looks clean. So here we go. So we have our if else statement here and we have our filter happening here. And again, let's just remove the filter uh, to get our one, two, 15. And you see that all we have is our list here. We have our whole list. And then we're gonna replace that argument with our filter so that we're not getting, we're not passing the full list we're passing a filter list for any value higher than one. And again, uh, if we did the old one, so if we did this with greater than two, uh, we're filtering out one and two. If we did it greater than zero, one, two, 15. And the same thing with our lambda. So if we did greater than zero, we're gonna get all our numbers. 
If we did greater than 1, we get 2 and 15. Greater than 2 will return us just 15. So I hope that conceptually makes things a little bit easier to understand. Um, ultimately, for this video, we're trying to learn about list comprehensions, not lambdas. But I think it helps paint the picture for how this kind of works, right? So the fact that it, this is explicitly says filter helps me remember that this if statement to the right of the for loop is a filter. And then what's happening to the left of the if statement, this if else, um, is the, the first part of the map in the lambda. Now the last thing I want to show you guys is what this would look like if you had to do a traditional for loop and you didn't do a list comprehension. Because some people might not have, maybe that lambda thing was a little too advanced for people. So we're just going to do the whole thing as a for loop and compare a for loop to a list comprehension now and how those if else statements work. So again the logic is if i equals 3 we'll multiply that by 5 and right now we just want values that are greater than 0 or let's just say greater than 1 so at least some operation is happening there. So I think what we want to do is instantiate a variable called results okay so we have an empty list and then we'll do for i in list A. And now we're going to do our first level filter. I want to do this guy. So we're going to do if i greater than 1 uh, results.append. And I think that's all I need to do. And when we print results, we're going to get 2 and 3. Oh, yeah, because now I need to actually multiply things. So we'll do if greater than 1. That is our filter. We'll do um, i equals i x five, and we'll do results dot append i. Okay. So now this should be good to go. All right. We need to create a new results every single time we run this. Okay. So for i in list one, if i greater than 1 i equals i x 5 results dot pen i okay so now this should work we have our results and we have 10 and 15. Uh, my operation is a little bit different because it's basically if anything's greater than 1 multiply that by 5. I'm not checking for the 3 yet but you can already see how this is just way longer than a list comprehension but I also just want to show you that this is that first filter. So everything that's happening is happening one level deeper. So that if statement is the same as the if to the right of the list comprehension. And now you're wondering, what about that if else inside? So now let's run that. So we'll create a new list called results. And we'll do for i in list one. And again, we're going to do that first level filter if i greater than one. And now everything is going to happen inside this if statement. And now we're going to have another if statement. And yeah, I guess if number, if i equals 3, then we'll do i equals i x 5. And then the else is just num or just i. That's what we were doing before. And then let me think. I think we want to append all the results in here because we still need it to be inside the first if statement. So I don't want that results.append to be um, outside of this filter. So we'll do results.append i. Should be good. Now we look at our results and we get 215. And that is exactly what I expected to see. So that 215 should be, and this will be a little weird, but it should be the exact same as our first list comprehension where it's greater than one. Okay, so let's compare these two statements again. So first we have to instantiate an empty list. Then we have to do a for loop, a first if statement, a second if statement with an else, and then append things, and then print out our results. So just look how much cleaner it is to do a list comprehension than a full for loop. And not just cleaner, let's again review the logic of the if else statements. 
So the if else to the left of the for loop is happening after things have been filtered. So the first line of defense is our filter, uh, which happens on the right in a list comprehension. So this if filter is the first thing we're going to do. And then after we pass that filter, then we can get into our if else operation. And again, all this is the same thing as the lambda we looked at before. I just wanted to show you a for loop of how to do it. And maybe this is even clearer than the map with the filter. The fact that you can see the nesting and see the order of operations. Skipped ahead just a second in order to print out our lambda again, just so you can see everything on one screen. So on the bottom, we have our lambda. In the middle, we have our list comprehension. And on the top, we have our for loop. And these are doing all the exact same thing. They all result in 2 and 15. And you can see the list comprehension is by far the shortest. And it's also by far the cleanest. We're not using a filter built in. We're not using a map built in. We're not using a list built in. We're not using a lambda. So the list comprehension is just the easiest way to do it. And keep in mind one more time, if else statements go to the left and if statements go to the right. I hope this cleared up things for you. I hope this was educational. Um, if so, please feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Other than that, Thanks for watching.